Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome to our corner of the tech world where we dive into all things macOS and Hackintosh. For those not super familiar, Hackintosh is all about running macOS on non-Apple hardware. Think custom PCs or laptops tricked out to mimic a Mac's ecosystem. It's got this underground vibe, blending Apple's sleek software with the flexibility of PC parts. Back when I first got into tech tinkering, I stumbled onto Hackintosh during my early days experimenting with Linux and Windows alternatives. I developed a real fascination with it, especially for creative tasks, because it offered that Mac polish without the premium price tag. I remember setting up my first build on an old Toshiba laptop just for the thrill of making it work, and it quickly became my go-to for graphic design and video editing. But over time, as Apple's silicon chips took over, I wondered if Hackintosh was still viable or just a hobbyist's playground. That's because despite some community debates about its future, like fading support for Intel hardware and the rise of ORM, it remains a clever way to access macOS tools on budget-friendly setups. With all the buzz around macOS updates in 2025, I decided to revisit the Hackintosh scene by checking out a Reddit thread asking if anyone actually uses it as a daily driver. I expected a mix of nostalgia and warnings about instability, especially post-Apple's full shift to silicon. And yeah, my initial dive confirmed some hurdles. I saw mentions of Wi-Fi glitches, app incompatibilities, and the hassle of patches like OpenCore Legacy Patcher on older machines. It made me question if it's worth the effort for everyday use, especially when real Macs are more efficient now. I even thought about scrapping this video idea because it felt like dwelling on the downsides. But that wouldn't be fair. Hackintosh works exceptionally well for many, and it's evolved a lot. It just might not suit everyone, depending on your needs. What frustrated me at first turned into appreciation because this community thread highlighted real success stories that align with my own experience. If you're researching Hackintosh as a potential daily driver, don't just take hot takes from folks who dipped in briefly. Look at long-term users' insights through the lens of practical workflows. Instead of focusing on the barriers, let's talk about what genuinely stands out from that Reddit discussion and why Hackintosh could still be a game-changer for creators like me. First off, tons of people shared that they've been using Hackintosh as their main machine for years, some for over a decade. One setup with a Ryzen 7 desktop and Ryzen 5 laptop runs smoothly with full graphics acceleration, though AirDrop is a no-go without specific tweaks. Another on an HP Pavilion laptop has been rock solid on macOS Sequoia since 2018, with plans to swap in Broadcom Wi-Fi for better stability. Music producers raved about low latency performance in Logic Pro on high-end builds like an i9 with 64GB RAM, outperforming even some M1 Pros. Desktops built for stability often beat real max in upgradability. You can slop in more RAM or storage anytime. Laptops like ThinkPads or XPS models shine too, with flawless sleep modes, long battery life, and seamless iCloud sync once you disable power-hungry components. From my side, I rely on Hackintosh daily for graphic work in Canva, Figma, and PhotoP. It's snappy and integrates perfectly with macOS's design tools without the cost of a new MacBook. For video editing, my YouTube content, CapCut runs like a dream, handling renders faster than on my old Windows setup. And let's not forget the fun of tinkering. I've got a ThinkPad rigged for Hackintosh experiments, tweaking configs just because it's satisfying. The thread echoed this. Folks use it for Photoshop, Affinity apps, coding in Xcode, and even audio production with Pipewire for low-latency routing. Hardware-wise, AMD GPUs like RX 5080 or 6950 XT pair great with Intel or Ryzen CPUs, running everything from Mojave to Sequoia. Tools like OpenCore and Nuded Red fix graphics quirks, and adding Broadcom cards sorts Wi-Fi and Bluetooth issues. Pros include massive cost savings, especially in regions where Macs are overpriced, and avoiding Windows headaches for creative flows. Sure, there are cons like occasional updates breaking things or no CUDA for NVIDIA-heavy tasks, but community fixes keep it viable. One user summed it up, their triple-boot Dell handles personal macOS use while VMing Windows for work. It's inclusive for those who want Mac elegance on PC hardware. I want to wrap this up with a thought from the gaming world that feels spot-on here. A game for everyone is a game for no one. 
The Hackintosh community isn't trying to replace every Mac out there. That's impossible with Apple's ecosystem lock-in. It's building a purposefully flexible, cost-effective alternative that's streamlined for tinkerers and creators who value upgradability and performance tweaks. If you're drawn to that workflow and find the setup process refreshing, it'll serve you exceptionally well. You'll fall in love with it. My choice to stick with Hackintosh for graphics and editing isn't a knock on real Macs. It's just what fits my needs, like casual ThinkPad experiments alongside Pro Tools. Honestly, revisiting this thread has me even more excited about its potential in 2025. I'm bummed if you're not giving it a shot yet. Is Hackintosh right for you as a daily driver? I encourage you to find out by diving into open core guides and testing a build. If you're looking for more tips on macOS tweaks or creative setups, check out my other videos. Until next time, take care and keep creating.